Freerun episode 8. Freerun is in jail of her own volition. I am drought. Drat. Stronger than your master. What a flex. Oh, he nent her. It was already attached from the beginning. But she nend her neck? Is this a Hunter X Hunter reference? His skills include strings and yapping. She's using words. Like they use words. Whoops, lost your arm. Whoops, lost your other arm. Wow, there was just no talking. There was no talking to be had. Thank you for opening the door for me. Not that I needed it. Yes, surely they will be reasonable. If only there was some evidence. Demons don't really leave bodies. Yeah, we well, got in there somehow, right? So far in this demon introduction, I'm like, well, maybe? Maybe there's something redeeming? And everyone's like, nope, there's nothing. And I'm like, but, but maybe? Nope, there's nothing. You just kill them. So far. Roughly calm, considering Freeman is or was in jail. Trusting in Freeman. How can you tell? Got some strong nans, speaking of which. Oh no! Wow, it's a quite a pathetic moment that he just leaned right into. Oh no, I've soiled myself. Good <laughs> aim. Just like the dragon. Eisner would be proud. He does remind me a lot of Zenichi. Zenichi? What the f is his name? Zenitsu. When Zenitsu was introduced in Demon Slayer, the initial instinct was to write him off as just like a, a crybaby or a whiner. What I said at the time, and I'm feeling that again now about Stark, is that a lot of times that is the case. It can be really frustrating to see people gripe and, and whine, make excuses. Often, you, you know, you feel as though they're so transparently excuses. It's so easy to make a million reasons why something is not possible or why the odds are stacked against you or why things that are out of your control are the only things that matter in life. And you got to be careful leaning into or vocalizing these things because the more energy you give them, the bigger they get. You're essentially feeding those neural pathways and cementing them. Roads that see traffic become super highways, etc. But there's a rare case or type of person where they have to get all that negativity out. Vocalizing it is a way of bringing it to the conscious level so it could be struck down. It's like, I don't want to be caught off guard by the worst things, the things I'm most afraid of. So, all right, here are my fears. And then critically, I'm going to do what I have to do anyway. In doing it, all of the, you know, the whining, etc. becomes more bearable. I can make a case that there's a similar phenomenon in just overall life uh, philosophy. I would say one of the people in my life who has the strongest, most robust worldview, the healthiest emotional core, the least afflicted by despair, sadness and negative emotion as a whole is actually the person who I think is the most negative in certain ways in that he has spent a lot of time and energy ruminating on the very very worst elements of humanity and life with brutal honesty and absolute intensity of focus and then sort of come to terms with it so that there's really nothing or not much that would catch him off guard. It's like, okay, I already assume all the all the terrible things exist. I've already looked at the worst things I can look at. And through that, I've developed all the tools I need for myself to operate in the world in a way that makes me feel comfortable and satisfied and confident. So what is going to stop me? You know, what could possibly throw me off my game? It's really interesting interacting with him and hearing his theories because he'll often take what on the surface seems to be a very, very cynical position on things, yet lives in a very positive world and is able to affect really great outcomes for himself and lives a somewhat emotionally stable life. I think it goes wrong when you are giving weight and reality to demons that aren't real, which is often the case, like making blanket assessments of yourself, like that you're incapable of doing something or that you are bad, for example, just X category thrown onto something as a whole, giving up agency unduly, like I can never be satisfied or get what I need in life because of X conspiracy or trait or what have you. Or when you bend the truth to be positive in a way that does not actually reflect the reality of what things are because you don't know how to deal with it or you're too afraid of what 
what that would mean or what you'd have to do. I think the goal is not positivity or negativity categorically, but truth and focusing on things that are actionable with a truthful structure for what the world is. So Stark's, you know, moaning doesn't really bother me that much. Nor does Zenitsu's. Odd thing to say. Not sure I get his point. I was busy crying, speaking of whining. Oh, it's gonna fall in free reign. Okay, I'm glad you got you were able to put it together. Right, she could have gotten out of that at any time. Wow, the food quality around here is really gonna suffer. My, but my mommy, my daddy. Mommy? Oh, he's about to turn into a titan. That was a lot. That's a lot. Oh, he's also a bloodbender. Just pick your reference. That's some good bloodbending. I appreciate. Something very carnage like about this, too. I'm Spider Man. I'm just throwing out every reference under the sun. <laughs> when your opponent laughs at you when they're beating you with their bloodbending. I dressed up nice for this. Definitely a commentary on language here, or like, I don't know, human social interaction and manipulation through words. It's pretty cool. Oh, he's saying it. Freerun and Lugan are really against me. <laughs> I guess they're just evil, huh? I just walked out. Doesn't look great. Although, they seem to have figured it out. I think you should stick around for the war. Are they actually gonna do it? That's amazing. This scene is played very pleasantly, but it's like a horrific thing. They're about to go into a demon war with perhaps very slim survival chances. Oh, it's, oh right, yeah. Creepy. Something off putting about Freerun smiling like that. Fern Stark's stealth mission was not on my episode bingo card, but it's pretty cool. I, I can just fly. You don't need to do all that. Very apolitical of them. <laughs> Yeah, we met him. This guy poses more of a threat than quality, you'd think, though. His and Aura's techniques will be up to date. They'll be modern. Humanity has not had 80 years. Speaking of an arms race. Like birds in glass windows. Flam was a beast, huh? Oh, we're getting to Haiku territory now. I wonder if there's anything to the fact that the demons are getting bigger and stronger and smarter and the elves are going extinct and presumably weaker and weaker. Who's going to pick up the torch for Flam? Freewin seems somewhat unwilling. Overanalyzing this a whole lot, the view or picture one has of humanity can vary greatly depending on the lens. You look around you, you see a lot of deception, selfishness, terrible actions, human atrocities, and you might conclude the end is near, humanity's on the brink of destruction, we're in the worst time to be alive. And certainly there is a bit of an arms race, you know, like evil always exists. It's just a capacity that humanity has, and so it will always be a thing. And sadly, it 
also happens to be easy, like it's just the base natural animal nature. A lot of the worst elements are kind of the default settings, and the best elements are difficult and require advanced compilation of skills and traits and knowledge. But you look at it in another lens, and you might think, in some sense, the rare goodness, assuming it is rare, can compile that mixture of all these things, you know, a, a greater awakening and awareness of oneself and what humanity means and its value and potential, knowledge that can be synthesized into adding a, a new step or new limb of the tree in terms of the capability of what humans can do and our understanding and like gems of wisdom and knowledge that emerge, that those weirdly might end up being more permanent and kind of raise the bar of potential. So that even though there is a lot of just constant turmoil and this arms race between good and bad in humanity, the baseline now and then by perhaps a very small group of people or just individuals is like pushed up one rung so that the terrible elements that I was describing exist now on that higher rung. And you could say very optimistically the story of human existence, at least up to this point, has been one of advancement in very objective terms. I mean, just in terms of like lifespan, infant mortality, availability of food and clean water, treatments for illnesses, a very comprehensive body of knowledge that while not everyone may access it, everyone has access to. We still have the wisdom of the ancients. This demon or the demons themselves might be this perpetual state of warring humanity, you know, using the words, using manipulation, seeking destruction. Flam might be that beacon, you know, that synthesis of goodness that forever raises the bar. And yeah, evil would hate that. I'm a big believer in the power of potential and potential being one of the most important rubrics rather than the, the immediate state. So while terrible things will never go away, the depth of potential for humanity seems to only get bigger. And to me, that's a, a comforting, inspiring fact. And in fact, throughout all of history, you can find people who are looking at current data and extrapolating in a straight line, leading that right into doom and gloom and how this is the end. But what they're missing is the unforeseen, the black swan of innovation change that has a way of suddenly making all the problems we thought we had irrelevant. And that's largely due to the best elements of human nature, its ingenuity and drive. Well, that's why his bloodbending was so strong. <laughs> Like, sniff it, yeah. You can smell the fear. Shut up, where's Fern? She might be able to do the rope. Yeah, I was about to say you have an axe. Oh no. Oh boy. Do not blame you in the slightest. Oh? Why? Happy to be alive, but unhappy to be so irrelevant? Or maybe happy to be so irrelevant? This is not evidence of some kind of guideline, guideline principles? Uh, Freeman would say no. Alright. Okay, doing great. I don't know if Freeman's watching over this though. I want to believe she is, but... That hand formed the same pattern that the strings did before Freeman made short work of that other guy. Drought. Does this feel good or bad? <laughs> oh, who got out and this time? Yeah, I mean, she had to be close. We can see it with our eyes! He just get got? That was a very melody moment, <laughs> sensing someone in the room. He's just a fan of magic. Oh, she learned it too. Soul track plus. Mommy, daddy. My mommy, my daddy. They really proved something today to themselves and everyone. Cool exit. It helps that he has total control over his own blood. Adding a reference, he's also T-1000 from Terminator 2. Speaking of arms races, your own techniques used against you. Yeah, probably looks very familiar. Oh, so he's fought for and survived. <laughs> she can be really terrifying. Oh, she holds the record? Wow. 
just gets cooler and cooler. Episode eight, Fear in the Slayer, really burying the title card there, but it works. You'd think they would be more, <laughs> more intimately familiar. I mean, I guess it's been a while. You would remember Fear in the Slayer, right? You would see her every night in your dreams, your nightmares. It would be funny if like Fear in turns into a kind of like mob psycho or one punch man thing where they just really have no chance against Fear in anyway. And it's a, it's a story of the, the journey of the human heart, the villains just being there for internal character development as opposed to power, growth, and challenge. I do feel like there is something Haikyuu like about the whole genius thing. Is Fear in a genius? I think it's been kind of established that she's not at, on the level of Flam. Early on, she had that parallel with Fern, if I'm remembering correctly, where it wasn't necessarily that she just loved magic. It's that it just was a decent fit for her and she rolled with it and learned to love it. I mean, she definitely has talent. Is she this way because of some natural born gift? Not so clear. She puts a lot into it. She trained under the best. She's constantly learning new magic. This episode establishes that she was one of the key people in understanding the destruction spell and modifying it that, she, you know, and then teaching it to Fern. What does the genius mean exactly? What I came away from from my cue is that there's more than one way to approach the whole genius thing, but I think it has a lot to do with not your inborn talents and gifts, but who you are and how that's accumulated towards your approach to life. If you have a really good outlook towards a thing and you really are tapped into its significance and are largely unencumbered to the best of your ability by the headwinds of self-destruction and personal rumination, distractions, excuses, etc., you will naturally follow the course that will lead to you becoming a genius, though the specifics and details of that path might look different for, from one person to another. You take Kanata in Haikyuu, he just starts with pure passion, love, grit, strength, toughness, and not a lot of volleyball knowledge. But because he has a pure open-minded pursuit towards that thing, it inevitably leads him to go to the basics and the fundamentals and become an actually good volleyball player because he's harmonious with like what the thing actually is and open-minded and strong enough to face his own weaknesses and work on them, etc. Is that not the case for Freerun? Has she not been pursuing magic almost exclusively to maybe the detriment of like other things in her life? Is this guy not just making excuses for his own weaknesses? Something Freerun would never do? I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that Freerun had talent, but talent alone is not a genius make. People like to focus on the genius thing and how you were born and miss the fact that those geniuses also end up putting in a lot of work towards the thing because they enjoy it because of their natural aptitude. But the work is kind of key there. Maybe on a more applicable just life thing, life level. When I talk to people who truly, truly feel stuck and are in real states of despair and I try to figure out what are the things that are really the obstacles. Very often you find that they're hyper fixated on things that are just completely inactionable, things that are totally out of their control, which is the opposite of what would be the most productive, right? Random examples include like not being born into a rich family. It's like, okay, you weren't born into a rich family. That's a non-starter. Being born below a certain height as a guy. It's like your DNA, probably dictated you would fall within this range of height. Not taking any away from the fact that that might actually have effects on your life. That is what it is. Like, how long are you going to stay there? All the energy you're, you're pouring into that thought, gnashing your teeth at it, it's like pouring water into concrete. It just does nothing. What are the things you actually can improve? Are you doing those things? Probably not. So what right even do you have to blame all those other factors? And even worse, you go hunting for the ways in which the odds are stacked against you. You will find examples of the way odds are stacked against you, even when they're not actually stacked against you. Like, you will overplay their significance because it feeds into your narrative. There's something comforting about blaming the world and blaming things out of, outside of your own control. It gives you an enemy. It gives you a, a, an emotional target and lets you off the hook a little bit from having to do the, the actual things you need to do, which are very likely difficult and terrifying. I don't know if any of this is really related, but I will say that Freerun seems unbelievably focused towards her goal. She seems to love magic for magic's sake, and that path has led her here. It'll be interesting to keep track of this whole like genius thing as the show continues.